Our passage this morning out of the 17th chapter of the Gospel of John comes to us with Jesus praying. The last couple weeks we had Jesus walking through the vineyard in the Kidron Valley talking about the branches and the vine and how we're meant to love and abide and be living in Christ. And here we have Jesus' final prayer. This is all still the night before he's handed over. Right? We have to understand the context here of what Jesus is, where Jesus is at, what Jesus is doing, and what's going on. This is considered to be the high priestly prayer of John. It's the 17th chapter. If you read the whole thing, it actually is a very interesting chapter because he starts out the chapter by praying about how God put him in the world. And then the section we have today, we have about Jesus praying for the disciples. Those who, he, those who you gave me. They know my word. They know me. They know everything that I have came from you. And then starting in verse 20 through the end, he prays for those who will hear on behalf of the apostles. Do you realize that? That Jesus prayed for you the night before he was crucified. Think about that for a moment. But this passage gives us three unique things this morning, which I think are very appropriate on Baccalaureate Sunday. Thing is how we have people who have completed one step of their life and are now moving into another process or step in their journey. This, thing, this passage this morning tells us three things. The first one is, the world is a difficult place to live. You thought I was going to say something hopeful, didn't you? <laughs> this tells us that the world is difficult. It's not an easy place to live in. There's strife and there's trouble. Jesus says that he has protected the apostles by the name that God gave them while he was with them. And now he's asking God to protect them from the evil one, right? There is difficulties in life. Life is not easy, right? And when you became a believer in God, all of your troubles went away, right? Right? No? No? I heard a no over here. It was a kind of a quiet no, though, so it wasn't emphatic. But... No! When you started to believe in Christ, your troubles didn't go away. You had a, a method or a mode with which to deal with the issues that are now compounding upon you. You know that God is always with you and that Christ is walking with you. But just because we believe in God doesn't mean that our life is perfect and everything is wonderful. There's still problems. There's still strife. There's natural, natural disasters. There's things that happen that we can't explain. Right? Life does not become a walk in the garden when we believe in Christ, which is interesting because this is where Christ prays for you in the garden. So the world is difficult. And the second thing that this, that this passage of Scripture tells us is that we're not going to be taken out of this difficult world. Right? Jesus specifically says, I'm not asking you to remove these people from the world, but that you be with them. God's plan, Jesus' plan, is not to give us an escape hatch. It's not to give us an escape route. It's not to give us an out from dealing with life's problems. Right? I read this passage, and I have to admit, um, confirmation students, where did my mind go? I read this passage, and thank you, Star Wars. Does anybody know where the title of the sermon comes from? Escape is not his plan. No guessing. It's from the fourth movie, right? It's from Star Wars A New Hope. When, when they discover on the Death Star that Ben Kenobi has made his way onto the Death Star, Darth Vader goes to Grand Moff Tarkin and he says that Obi-Wan Kenobi is here. And, he, and I don't remember what Grand Moff Tarkin says, actually, if you believe that or not. And then Darth Vader says that escape is not his plan. We're not supposed to allow him to escape. And Vader says, escape is not his plan. Jesus' plan when he came to this place was never to escape from this world. Because this is a world that God created and Jesus was a part of that creation. This is a place that he loved, despite all of the hate and all of the evil that happens here. This is a world that God created and God loved. And Jesus didn't come here to escape from it. 
Jesus came here to show us how to live in it and to love the creation all around us. Right? It's the same thing as the movie. Ben didn't go there to escape from what was happening around him. He went there to show to someone how it is to live and what it is to do the things that we need to do for the sake of the world around us. Escape is not something that we get. We don't get to escape from the, the troubles and the trials in life because God put us here for a reason. We are given to care for the world. That's the third part of this. And as our baccalaureates go on from here to learn something new, to do something for the world, right? They're going to learn a profession to do something for themselves, right? But if we truly believe what Luther told us, that we're all given a gift, and in using that gift we are doing ministry unto the world, everything that we do every day is ministry unto God's world. And we are given into the world to care and to love for that world. You see, if you look at this passage, you can look at, I'll show you my bulletin later if you want to see it. I've actually underlined some, some special words in here this morning. The word given. This third part here. The word given appears in our passage this morning nine times. The word given appears in the 17th chapter of the Gospel of John 17 times. The word given only appears 75 times in all of the whole Gospel of John. So out of 75, a little bit less than a third is here in the 17th chapter. And out of that, over half of them are in our passage this morning. And what was given in our passage this morning? The name that God gave to Jesus, the disciples were given to Jesus by God. And everything that was given to Jesus, Jesus gave to the disciples. It was given by God to Jesus. And Jesus gave it to the disciples. And the second word that happens in our passage this morning 12 times is world. Because we were given and Jesus was given for the sake of the world. For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son. Jesus was given for this created place that God made. And we don't get to escape out of it. We get to live in it and help and be God's hands and feet. You see, it's not about finding that place that's going to give us all the right answers and make our lives something beautiful. That would be nice, wouldn't it? I saw a cartoon yesterday that said, when I'm having troubles, all I wish someone would do is come and give me a hug and tell me everything was going to be all right and a cup of coffee and a bag of $2 million. <laughs> It'd be wonderful, wouldn't it? But you know what? Not going to happen. They might come and hug you and tell you everything's going to be alright and give you a cup of coffee. Maybe, if you're lucky. But that's not what it's about. It's about understanding that we were put here for a purpose. We were put here for a reason. We were put here to be part of God's plan and God's mission. You are God's hands and feet. You were given to the world so that you might show forth God's love to that world, just as Christ came to show love to the disciples, to show love to the world around Him, and to forward His message on to you, so that you could continue to be His hands and His feet. So, graduates, I say good luck, because you're going to need it. Because <laughs> it's a hard world out there. But you know what? If you can cling to those people that are sitting around you and cling to that faith that, that they have helped to instill in you, everything's not going to be perfect. But you'll at least have something to know that you are loved and that you're not alone in this mess that's happening all around you. And to all the rest of you, the same exact thing goes. I wish you luck in the world. Because it's going to be hard. And some of us know that better than others. But if we can cling to Jesus and cling to that faith, He's always going to be with us.
So don't worry about all those troubles. Just hold tight to God and show forth His love to everybody that you come in contact with because that's why He put you here. That's why He gave you to the world. To show them His love.